Hello guys and welcome to 3D Printing and Painting. I wanted to show you a new toy I got for the hobby room. Yes, I've got a ton of FDM printers, but now i got a resin printer. So I can print some really cool stuff in super high detail. Anyway, uh, for quite, I don't know, a few years now I've wanted to get into resin printing, but the price has been up there, the resin is really expensive, and finally they've, they've got better in quality, they came down in price, and the Elegoo Mars on Amazon.com is on sale right now, and I believe for maybe and possibly another month for $249. And it's an awesome price, it's a great little printer. I've done a couple test prints and a few heads with it, not knowing much about the unit, and it came out great. And I've got on the uh, Elegoo Mars Facebook group any questions I had or comments, you know, there's always somebody there to help you. But it's, you know, fairly simple. But the number one, one, number one thing I want to say about resin printing is always wear your safety glasses and always have on safety gloves. One thing I didn't know before using this printer, I thought that the resin would be fairly thick. Once I actually went to pour it, I was pouring it into the vat, I noticed it's that the consistency of milk from what I have here with the Elegoo Mars gray resin, and it is gray obviously, and it's the consistency of milk. So it pours fairly quick, and yes, it can splash, don't be in a hurry when you pour it. And always wear your safety glasses, always wear gloves. And I printed, I got on Thingiverse, and I printed out a cover to put on the vat. So when the cover's off, you'll see that the vat has a black plastic cover that I printed. It's just to keep the light out of it, or debris, or anything that might be floating around. And whenever I take off that vat cover, I will definitely be wearing gloves. Anything where there's any kind of chemicals that might get on my hand or skin, wear gloves. And then I bought an ultrasonic cleaner off of Amazon. The first one I had bought was very small, so I gave it to my wife said, here, you can do your jewelry, and I bought her some cleaner. So she was excited, so then I went out and bought a bigger one. And this little ultrasonic cleaner works really good. So far, I've been leaving my prints in there for probably 10 to 15 minutes, and I rotate them like an egg, because they tend to sit on one side. And it's not very loud. You can hear it running, but it's not very loud. It's got a timer on it. This is by Rob Sun, R-O-V-S-U-N, the one that I bought here. I believe it was like 80 or 90 dollars. It comes with a little basket too that I don't have in it. So basically my steps are, uh, I go to Cheat Cheat Cheetah Box Software, I get everything loaded on the SD card, I plug it into the card reader on the back of the machine. In this case I went and bought a little bungee cord to plug into so I don't have to reach around the back. Once the print is done, I put on my safety glasses, my gloves, take off the top, unscrew the knob, take the small plastic supplied scraper, I scrape the print off the build plate or pull it off by hand, whichever works at that time depending on the size of the print, put it directly in the cleaner, clean it real well on both sides for 10 or 15 minutes, let it vibrate to get off all the excess resin. If there's still more on, I bought some cheap toothbrushes from the dollar store that I can do a little scrubbing with, but I haven't had to do that yet. And then from there I go to this little pickle jar, which was I originally bought thinking I wouldn't need to get the ultrasonic electric cleaner. And then I put the part in here and swish it around, dunk it a few times, whatever it takes to get off all the cleaner. And my cleaner of choice is Mean Green Super Strength. Uncle Jesse put out a great video recently talking about different types of cleaners that he tried. This was his favorite that worked the best, so this will be my favorite. And it seems to work fine. So. Uh, Lowe's is like five bucks a jug, and I hear at Walmart they're two for ten, so it's very cheap. You get a gallon, there's plenty of it, and as long as it's green and not and runny and doesn't get thick, I'm sure that little bit of cleaner there will last a very long time. I'm not sure about its evaporation rate, but it really doesn't matter. It's not expensive. So anyway, now that I'm jumping around in my speech, we go back to the little pickle barrel here. We get everything clean, towel off the print, get off the excess. Then I come over here to my UV uh, dryer. Now one thing about this little dryer I got, I've seen on the Facebook group some people were taking toaster ovens and gutting their toaster ovens and wiring into the timer and putting all their LEDs across the back and across the top of the to toaster oven, which I thought was a great idea, so I done the same thing. But the little plastic strips that you get with LEDs have little tiny contacts you have to solder to. And I believe I was using like 18 to 20 gauge wire. It was very small and once I got it all done one of my contacts broke. No biggie. Tried to re-solder it. I couldn't. So I cut, it off, cut off an inch of the UV strip and re-soldered. Put heat shrink tape over it. 
once I was installing it inside of the oven, two more contacts broke. At that point, I was getting frustrated and felt like throwing it across the room. But I don't want to do that. I got a lot of money tied up in the toaster oven and the light strip. So I took it, put it in the spare room. I went down to Lowe's. I bought a $20 trash can. It's got a little foot plunger on it. It's chrome. You step on the plunger, the lid opens. So I brought it home, took off all the plastic guts, took off the handle. And what I'm left with is a round uh, chrome can. So I bought more strips off of Amazon, started at the bottom, went zoop, 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 all the way to the top, and that works great. Let me turn it on here and I'll show you. Let's plug it in, and there we go, voila, it's lit up. And then I had a little mirror pre-cut for an Ender 3 laying out in my garage. It sits on the mirror for reflection. And then Amazon sells these little tiny solar turntables that will automatically turn when they're sitting in here. So then I set the print in it for 15, 20, 25 minutes, it depends. Turn the print over if need be until it's completely cured. Unplug the power strip, take it out, and voila, I'm good to go. So the first thing I tried is there's two rooks. There's a file on the SD card we can print these tiny little rooks. And there's a little spiral doohickey in the middle and a little staircase that goes all the way up and winds and it is printed perfectly it looks really great let me see if you can not quite sure if you can see them there but the quality on these is awesome they look perfect and I don't really care about what color resin I print in since they're, they're going to get primered and painted these test subjects here probably won't be painted but anything else but my models will be and then for Mortal Kombat I did a Molina and katana heads here. They're from DTR Studios. And I just printed these two. This would not be my second and my third print that I got done. And look at the detail on her teeth there. Just unbelievable. And the two ha hairs on her forehead that even printed, they're real tiny. And the Chichu Box software, the only thing I, uh, uh, what was it? The only thing I changed in settings from stock that another Facebook friend recommended was a support structure density. I went up to like 73 to 75, that way it gives it more supports. And I changed the angle. I can't remember what the angle was on it. But if you go on their Facebook group, there's, you know, if you have any questions or recommendations or any ideas, you're, you can message anybody or leave a post or just, you know, search for a topic in the search bar is the best way. But anyway, these came out great. I'm real happy with it. I know nothing about resin printing other than what I've done for the last two or three days, but it's awesome. But the number one thing is over FDM, it's, it can be messy, but you don't want it to be messy because you're working with chemicals, working with resin. Keep everything neat and tidy and clean. Wear gloves, wear safety glasses. And also the supports that are on these models, they come off really super easy, but be sure you take them off before you cure them, whether it be outside or in a little UV oven with a black light, UV light because they come off real easy. Wearing gloves, they break off real easy with my hands. You know, I tend to hold them over the pickle barrel that I have the water in, and I break them off and let them fall in there so they don't get on the floor or get all over the tray. And then I can just take the basket out by the handle and go to the garbage can and dump it out. But they come off real good. One little piece of the support hit me in the face, but it was real minor. Um, but thank God, I'm glad that I to remove the supports after cleaning it in the ultrasonic cleaner because I don't want to get no resin on that part hitting me in the face. But anyway, it worked out real good. And I ordered two more bottles of resin, uh, gray off Amazon. I think they're like 45 to $50 a bottle. So far on these few prints here, the resin's going really far. I've barely used any. I got plenty of paper towels. Uh, this PTFE oil, three-in-one PTFE oil, people recommend that you, when you first get your printer, the LCD screen, you put a few drops on it, you get a microfiber towel and you dry it real good, wipe it off. It's to help that the sheet from sticking and the same inside the vat. To put a few drops in there and wipe it down, clean it really well, get all the excess off so it doesn't leave any kind of a film before you dump in your resin or after each time you clean it. And how often will I clean the resin vat? Well, I don't think I'm going to need to. I'll just keep adding resin and keep going till one of these days it goos up or I feel a lot of debris in the bottom or I have trouble with a print, but you do not need to clean the vat that often. You don't need to clean it after every print. And if you're not going to print for a few days, it's fine. The resin will not dry up on you. The UV light cannot get to it. 
Sam, I'm, I will be printing on a continuous basis. If I was going to take a gap for a week or two or, you know, whatever it may be, then I would drain the vat, filter it with the, the supply, supplied strainers, and put it back in the bottle. But since I'm going to be printing every day or every couple days, I have no reason to clean the vat out. I'll just keep adding resin to it. Anyway, that's about all I have to say and all I know. I'll also know a good thing to buy. Get a UV flashlight. Rather than going around your house looking for stains that might be around in the dark that you miss cleaning, you can, any uh, resin that you get on your build plate, not on your build plate, but on your tray, on the table, on your tools, utensils, anything that you didn't quite properly wop, wipe off and throw away, you can hit it with a UV flashlight, hold it on it for a few minutes, and you can cure that resin and just peel it right off. So this is very ha handy to have. And on Amazon, they're like, I don't know, $10 and up. They're not very expensive. This one was probably about 15 bucks. And I just popped in uh, three or four uh, AA batteries. So that's about it for this video. I just want to kind of give you guys an update on what I, what I got going on on 3D printing and painting. And I hope to have a lot more videos coming out. And thanks, everybody, for coming out. Please like and subscribe to me. If you like hearing what I have to say, give me a thumbs up. Um, that's it. Thanks. One other thing I wanted to add to this, guys, and I forgot I forgot to mention, is uh, Elagu Mars uh, gray resin I'm currently working with is very low odor. I don't smell anything when I've been printing with it up to this point. I know there's a lot of brands out there that are very toxic and you can't be around them. The fumes are bad for you, very harmful to your health. If you have a printer with, and you're printing with resin that has a toxic smell, you need to have some sort of an enclosure and vent all that outside or work in a garage or have it away from your house, your animals, your pets, your birds. You don't want to kill anything or harm anything in your family. Um, this particular resin I'm working with has very low odor. I, my wife says she can barely smell it. I don't notice any odor whatsoever. I'm printing in my dining room here. It's very open air. And I have, I have no problem with any kind of an odor, so I do not need an enclosure working with this particular brand of resin. Other resins, I don't know. I'm still new to the hobby, and we'll see as we go. If I run into a resin that's strong, well, then I'll have to build an enclosure or temporarily take the unit outside or in the garage or to print at that time. So I just wanted to add this little note that if it smells, it's bad for you if you can smell it. Sometimes there's chemicals that are harmful to you that you can't smell, and there's particulates in the air. A dust mask is not going to catch those particulates. You have to have a respirator. Dust masks are for dust particles and things that float around in the air. Not microscopic fibers. That takes a special up filter. But anyway, just want to put on my two cents and how I feel about it. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.